Hi, welcome to Language in Film, where we take a closer look at how language is used creatively in cinema. Spoilers ahead for the films of Robert Eggers. My North Star becomes the historical research. Me and all my collaborators and all the actors know that the goal is this impossible idea of accuracy. A Robert Eggers movie does more than just tell a story about a time and place. It pulls you into the headspace of the characters who inhabit that realm. And so Robert Eggers presents us with the subjective reality of his characters, making real what they perceive as real. Black magic can steal a baby away in the blink of an eye. Madness and Lovecraftian horrors plague New England lighthouse keepers just offshore. The Northman's fabled blade that thirsts for blood can only be drawn in darkness. <laughs> Eggers meticulously researches the historical era in which his films are set. Every prop and set has to be as historically accurate as is reasonable. And one of the greatest tools he uses to do this is the language of his characters. Hark, Triton! Hark! Hello! Bid our father, the Sea King, rise from the depths full, foul in his fury! Egger's commitment to historical accuracy is the reason why he's one of my favorite contemporary filmmakers, despite having made at this point only three movies, The Witch, The Lighthouse, and The Northman. In each one, he takes great care to recreate the speech of the time period, which ultimately results in a more intense and immersive experience. Egger's first film, The Witch, was made with a budget of under $4 million, and is creepier than any horror movie I've seen in the last 10 years. We see Eggers' unique use of language here before the movie even begins with the title. Much like Tarantino misspells Inglorious Bastards to get our attention and establish expectations for what we're about to see, here Eggers does the same, using an antiquated but actual spelling convention of the time. And I absolutely love this movie's use of Elizabethan English. I cannot be judged by false Christians. For I have done nothing, save preach Christ's true gospel. Then shall you be banished from this plantation's liberties. For us, it has associations with both the King James Bible and Shakespeare, which is perfect for this movie given its religious overtones and dynamics of family tragedy. I think my favorite thing about the witch is that even Satan uses Elizabethan English. So good. What's the like the taste of butter? A pretty dress. The things Satan tempts Thomason with are objects that our modern selves would consider ordinary, but given the harsh ascetic lifestyle of Puritanism that she has been forced to endure, we understand how she would sell her soul for such simple pleasures. This is why Eggers can write such a great script. Only someone thoroughly steeped in the history of the time could make such a subtle, astute observation about their characters' wants and desires. In one interview, Eggers discusses how he drew on primary sources from the era for his dialogue, one specific example being the diaries of John Winthrop, the first governor of the Massachusetts Bay Colony. The Witch sometimes features direct quotation from the sources in the dialogue. Notably, when the boy Caleb is possessed, the words he speaks are verbatim from 17th century reports of child possession. The Lighthouse, Egger's second film, again takes place in a very specific time and place, and the language of the film reflects this. Tin kitchen shanty cooks. Oh, it was fried donuts three you're times drunk. a day. You're Punchy drunk. Punchy hand bigger you're than your drunk. Home. I'm drunk. I'm you heard me. To be drunk. Get me. Drunk since I first laid eyes on you. You're fond of me lobster, ain't you? The dialogue is infused with sailing jargon as well as the New England vernacular of the time. Again, it's exactly what you'd expect from a director keen on historical accuracy. The cadences of the character's speech 
are drawn from works like the writing of the novelist Sarah Orn Jewett, whose work captures the dialect of coastal Maine residents in the 19th century in the same way that William Faulkner would later record the regional dialects of Mississippi. I have to say, I didn't actually like The Lighthouse very much. I found it tedious, and I just wasn't in the mood to watch two men, or possibly one man, depending on your interpretation, slowly go insane for two hours. However, it received critical acclaim, and lots of people do appreciate this movie, and that's great. The performances are incredible, and the symbolism is complex and interesting, and the success of his second film secured Eggers' reputation and allowed him to go on to make The Northman, my favorite of his three films. The Northman is set about a millennia before the other films, in medieval Europe. Eggers had to make the choice to have most of the dialogue in English, but this decision was not an artistic one, but was for, quote, budgetary reasons. The Northman cost approximately 70 to 90 million dollars to make, compared to just 4 million for The Witch. And as a result, Eggers knew he'd be forced to make compromises with the studios that financially backed him. And of course, studio execs are going to want a movie in English, because they're boring people who lack souls. And in a 2021 interview with Collider.com, Eggers was asked, did you ever debate having the characters speak in the native language, or was that just not something you could consider with the budget you were playing with? His response was, yeah, it would be my preference for them, for the characters to speak in Old Norse and Old Slavic, and they do in some ritual situations, they do. But I knew that it was a non-starter. Unless I'm Mel Gibson financing my own movies, that's not going to happen with a budget like this. Nonetheless, as much as possible, Eggers managed to sprinkle in authentic languages in the movie in small ways. The pronunciations of Valhöl for Valhalla and Odin for Odin are examples. Hear me, Odin, all oh, father of the gods. Scenes involving rituals and spellcasting are given an extra layer of otherworldliness by being spoken in Old Norse and Old East Slavic. Any other director would have probably just used a modern day language like Icelandic or Ukrainian or Russian. After all, monolingual English speakers aren't going to know the difference. But that's not good enough for Robert Eggers, who instead had the ancient versions reconstructed and interpreted so they could be used in the film in an adherence to the linguistic realism that is unparalleled in modern big-budget movies. And thank Odin for a director like Robert Eggers who takes languages into account. My hope is that one day he gets to that Mel Gibson level where he can make a film entirely in the language of its people.